Let's be honest, eating to lose weight kinda sucks, doesn't it? We often feel restricted, we have to sacrifice some of our favorite foods, we feel like we can sometimes be a burden to other people who want to go out, have fun, go to the bar, go to restaurants, things like that. And we're just over here trying to live our healthiest lives and not feeling like we are living our fullest life all because we are dieting. Well, today I want to share with you 11 things that I do to make dieting suck a little less. What's up, my friend? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, a special hello. My name is Brianna. I am the diva behind Diva and the Divine and your healthy homemaker, sharing my personal journey through life via habits, health, happiness, and homemaking. Those of you that have been around for a while know that my journey on the dieting train has been a long and painful one. I have been off the wagon more than I have been on the wagon, but this journey on the everlasting decade of dieting has brought me experience that I love to share with you you guys, no matter where you are on your healthy living journey. And today I'm sharing something super, super special. And that is how to make dieting suck a little less because let's be honest, sometimes it's a little bit difficult. So these are just a handful of things that I do personally to help ensure that my dieting journey isn't always this slog through misery, but actually an enjoyable experience because let's be honest, the joy for everything in this life is in the journey and we can have goals. Yes, that's great. And we should have goals, things that we are aspiring to be they weight loss or otherwise. But if we don't enjoy the journey to get there, we are wasting our life trying to get to something that might take us a lot longer than we anticipated. So the importance of enjoying the journey is major. And I have 11 tips to share with you today that help me enjoy my journey a little bit more. Are you ready? Let's dive in. How I make dieting suck less. Number one, I eat a special treat every single day. You guys know I even have it in my bio and Instagram. I believe in eating dessert every single day. And I find that even if it's not an extravagant thing, some days my treat will be a portion or sometimes a whole crumble cookie or nothing bundt cake or some big fancy treat. Other days, it is a treat that is more macro friendly and fits easier into my plan. But regardless of which side it is, I always have something that I deem a dessert, a special treat to end my day with every single day. Because let's be honest, a life without dessert is not a life I want to be living. And you can, in fact, eat dessert on a diet. And that is something I know how to do, I love doing, and I love teaching other people how to do as well. I eat a treat every day. Number two, and I have only recently, within the past couple of years, really started to embrace the importance of this, and it is I season my food. Yes, that, I know that sounds ridiculous, but hear me out. In the good old chicken breast and broccoli time of my life where my food was just basic and boring, I just kind of accepted that the food that I had to eat in order to lose weight was just gonna be basic and boring. And you know what? I have recently discovered that for absolutely no calories, you can season the heck out of your food and make it taste so much better. Garlic, onion, herbs. I love dill. I love chives. I love, oh my gosh, I just love seasoning. And I'm not even a spicy food girl, so I don't even use the, the paprikas and the, the peppers and the, all of the hot stuff. I don't use any of that. My seasoning simply comes from flavor, not necessarily spice. But if you like spice, you can do that too. My point is, once I discovered the joy, I mean, I really owe this to Trader Joe's, let's be honest, uh, their seasoning blends. Once I discovered the joy of putting everything bagel seasoning on something as simple as my eggs. Their onion salt, the Trader Joe's onion salt, I put on literally everything, my vegetables, all of my meats, everything. And it has elevated the flavor of it so much that all of a sudden this healthy food has been elevated to, oh my gosh, something delicious that I want to eat. And it still fits in my plan. Y'all, if you are not seasoning your food and seasoning it well, what are you even doing with your life? It is one of the simplest things and zero calorie things that I have done to make dieting suck not even a little less, but a lot less. Season your food. Number three is I only do workouts that I actually enjoy doing. CrossFit, 
lovely. Marathon running, good for you. But these things are not for me. And no matter how much my husband loves it or my best friend loves it, if it's not something I'm going to enjoy doing, there is zero point in me doing it, even if it's going to make me lose 50 pounds. I want to enjoy this life that I am living. And the only way to do that is to make sure I'm actively choosing things that I enjoy in this life when I can control what I'm doing. Therefore, I explore and experiment and find workouts that speak to me. It is critical in order for you to enjoy working out that you actually pick workouts that you enjoy doing. How I make dieting suck less tip number four is I set realistic goals and expectations of myself. We have talked about this on my channel at nauseum. If you don't set realistic goals, you set yourself up to fail. And that can be anywhere from I want to lose 100 pounds in a single calendar year to I want to work out seven days a week for 60 minutes. We all know that the likelihood of you working out for 60 minutes every single day is probably going to be very slim. And if you do it for one week, the odds are you're not going to do it for three or four weeks straight. And the second you break that streak, the second you fail, you're going to feel terrible and guilty and unmotivated to continue. On the flip side, if you do something like I'm going to work out four times a week and you decide then to work out seven days a week, you've already met your goal. So then if you get to four and you don't want to work out the rest of the week or whatever the case may be, you want to take a rest day in the middle of the week, that's okay. You rested, which is also very important. It's not a tip in this video, but it's very important. You guys take your rest days. You shouldn't be going whole hog on a workout seven days a week anyway, but you get my point. If you set smaller goals, instead of saying, I want to lose 100 pounds in a calendar year, you can say, I want to lose 20 pounds in six months. Is that going to put you on track to lose the 100 pounds in a year? No, but some progress is going to be better than no progress, right? Making sure you break down your goals and expectations into smaller bite-sized things that you are guaranteed to be able to achieve is going to help you build that momentum and get the metaphorical snowball rolling down the hill. The more you succeed, the more you're going to want to succeed again. So break down your goals. How I make dieting suck less tip number five. I hired a coach. Yes, and I'm not just saying that because I am a coach, but let me tell you, my clients tell me that there are days, that there are days they don't need me, but there are days that I'm a godsend and they're glad that I am there. And the same thing for me. I hired a coach because I needed that extra accountability. I needed that extra person to walk beside me and to tell me what to do, to give me the macros so I don't have to waste my energy thinking about it and worrying about it and wondering if my numbers are right, even though I know how to count calculate them. I know how to do that. And my coach has actually told me, oh yeah, you know how to do this. If you need to change something, go ahead and change it. Not a big deal. But for me, the accountability is super, super important. And the second that I accepted that about myself, the acknowledgement that I needed the external accountability, and I forked over the money for that extra accountability, it has been game changing for me. It has been game changing for me through my reverse diet, through my maintenance phase, through my current cut, which is going slower than I want, but we're experimenting. I'm working one-on-one -on -one with somebody and it is a game changer for my personal journey. And it has been a game changer for my clients as well. Hiring a coach is one of the greatest things that I could have done and it has definitely made dieting suck less. Number six is I eat my favorite foods. Plain and simple. I like pizza. I like dessert. I like ice cream. I like Doritos, although I don't often eat Doritos, but they're not on a do not eat list. I do not have a do not eat list. If I have a favorite food, I figure out how to work it into my plan so I do not feel restricted. Because the second you feel restricted, it's all downhill from there and not in the good way. It's downhill to crash and burn land once you feel restricted. So I eat my favorite foods on a regular basis. How I make dieting suck less thing number seven is I calorie cycle or carb cycle. What this means is basically I have an allotment of, we use carbohydrates, but carb cycling because I track macros is the same as calorie cycling. It does the same thing. I'm just doing it with a specific macronutrient, but 
if you have a certain number of calories that you need to hit in a, in a day, you can multiply that by seven and discover the number of calories you need to eat in a week to achieve that deficit. And instead of going for 1800 calories every single day, you can pull back a couple of days. You can do 1600 calories three or four days a week, and you can tack those banked calories onto some other days to have one 2400 calorie day or two 2100 calorie days. And all of a sudden you have flexibility for date night, for girls night, for ordering in your favorite favorite pizza restaurant and again you stop feeling restricted because you're still allowed to have all of your favorite things and they fit in your calorie goal without starving yourself the rest of the time. Calorie cycling, carb cycling, call it whatever you want, even on bites plans for healthy or weight watchers, you've got weeklies. It's this it's entirely the same idea and it is game changing when you're trying to lose weight. Number eight is I find plan friendly recipes that I actually enjoy eating. You'll see a recurring theme here of doing things and consuming things that I actually like because this journey should not be miserable. You should enjoy the journey. So you got to make it enjoyable. And one of the ways I do that is I hunt down different blogs and recipes and find things that I love and then I continue to make them. If there's something that I really like, I make it over and over and over again. A few examples examples of things that I love are the skinniest dish meatloaf, the best meatloaf on the planet, so good, so macro friendly, life changing. Emily Bites creamy chicken and wild rice soup also delicious, also game changing. And most recently I have just started eating the skinniest dish biscuits and gravy bake, life changing breakfast y'all. Easy, convenient, amazingly delicious, and macro friendly. It's awesome. So I find these recipes that I love or even just, you know, the basic side dishes. My husband and I love the meal of well-seasoned chicken breast, a frozen vegetable that we popped in the microwave, and a favorite side dish, roasted potatoes, quinoa, things like that. And we love it. And so we eat it on repeat. It's healthy. It's lean. It's on track. I find recipes that I love and I make them. Number nine is super important and something that I'm always constantly monitoring and changing and reflecting on. And that is really leaning into my why. Why do I want to do this? What motivates me? It's not just about, oh, I want the smaller size. Oh, I want to be uh, confident in my body. Oh, I want to look better naked. Yeah, that's part of it. But there are a handful of deeper whys that I have and I regularly tap into. And I find that when I am regularly visiting and visualizing these whys, I am more motivated to stay on track. And that is super important. Number 10 is actually curating and recurating my social media feeds. This is really important for combating the comparison trap. And it is so easy, like it or not, to fall in the comparison trap the more time you spend on social media. You see people's stories and you go, oh, should I be eating that? Should that be my diet plan? Should that be my workout plan? They're losing weight at this rate. They're losing weight at this weight. And all of a sudden it's this giant comparison trap game and you forget to stay in your own lane and live your own life and be on your own journey. So I am constantly, constantly, curating my Instagram newsfeed. I am muting people who I just don't want to see on my feed anymore, but who are following me back. It's a you know mutual respect thing. So I won't unfollow them, but I will mute them so they don't pop up on my feed anymore. Maybe somebody's stories always make me feel like negative and ragey. I will mute those stories. If people are trying to tote built bars, I will almost automatically unfollow them because I have a very passionate dislike for that company and I just don't need it to be popping up on my news feeds, you know? So I'm constantly making sure that everybody that I do follow is aligned with the mindset and lifestyle that I want to be curating for myself and that I am eliminating any content that makes me feel a negative way because it's my space. It's my, my news feed is my space to be. So I'm in complete control over what I see on my news feed. I was going to stop at 10, but I actually have 11. So the last way I make dieting suck less is I put an end date on it. It doesn't matter if I have 20 pounds to lose, 30 pounds to lose, 40 pounds to lose. I am not putting a timeline on it. 
I'm not putting a goal date to have that weight gone. Instead, I have end dates for every time I'm in a calorie deficit. When you work with a coach, this will often be the case. And if it's not, you should be worried about the coach that you're working with. It is not good for our bodies to be in a caloric deficit for a long period of time. Therefore, you need diet breaks, you need maintenance breaks, you need periods of time, and you should have more periods of time where you're eating higher calories, closer to maintenance, instead of in a caloric deficit for weight loss. So for me, I know at any given moment, on a certain date, I am going to be stopping my calorie deficit. I have a diet break coming up in just two or three weeks. I know Oh, and I don't remember what date it is, but I know on the calendar what day I'm popping back up and eating somewhere between 1900 to 2200 calories instead of the low calories that I'm eating right now. It's on my calendar. I know it's going to end. And that gives me a little bit of light because I can go, oh, I have a break coming. I have the opportunity to eat more food really, really soon. Just keep going. It keeps me motivated to continue while I am in a deficit and it gives me hope for the future, so to speak, because I know that my deficit's not gonna be forever and that really helps me out. There you go, 11 ways that I make dieting suck less for me. Did you relate to any of these or do you have any specific things you do to help dieting suck a little less for you? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, it really helps me out if you give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna join the Diva and the Divine community, I would love to have you. Go ahead and click that little red button to join our team. As always, thank you so much for watching. Take care and I will see you next time. Bye.